So this is a photo of my family. And I know you can't tell from this photo, but both my parents are deaf and we use American Sign Language or we text each other to communicate. A few years ago, when my father was home alone, his gallbladder ruptured. As a deaf man, he was not able to call 911 for help. He texted me to call 911 for him, but I was not near my phone at that time. As his daughter, this really affected me. Why couldn't my dad text 911 directly? 70% of 911 call centers can't receive texts, but there are 37 million Americans, like my parents, who can't call 911. Due to aging legacy tech, the soonest the United States would get 100% access is in 2030. That's too long to wait. Our 911 system is broken and antiquated. You're given priority if you can speak fluent English, if you can hear the dispatcher, and if you sound like they do. Large 911 corporations make it so expensive to upgrade systems and give access to the highest payer. People with privilege don't see our problems. So many communities are left out. People with disabilities aren't the only ones that lack access. Think of all the people, non-English speakers, domestic violence survivors. They're left out of this voice-centric system. And that's why we founded Access SOS. Using the best solutions, we built a free mobile web app. It's an accessible user interface, and in three clicks, you can quickly contact your local 911 call center. Our soft launch is live in New Mexico right now. Currently, Access SOS is designed for three types of emergency services, medical, police, and fire. But when we listen to our community members who don't communicate in English, or hear when an armed police officer speaks out loud to them, the theme is they're scared to use our app to contact police. We asked a deaf black man, what would you do if the police didn't know you couldn't hear? He didn't know. He pointed to his ears and signed, I hope that never happens. We see opportunity to build 988 differently, to represent the diversity, the mental health needs, and technology of today's society. We are shaping the future of access to emergency services, and this is where V comes in to our story. A disabled graduate student herself, she has helped us reimagine inclusive design. Imagine having a mental health emergency, or having autism, or any combination of identities that isn't seen by the police. How do you get the right kind of help, especially if you're considered a threat? Imagine being handcuffed, but your only way of communicating is through your hands. There are too many heartbreaking stories of deaf individuals incarcerated, assaulted, or killed because they were seen as being uncooperative with the police, but they simply couldn't hear. It's moments like this that tell us our communities need more relevant support than law enforcement. We are adding a fourth option for emergency services that includes mental health and other community needs that right now data is not collected about. The only publicly available nationally organized data that we have doesn't specify behavioral health needs. By adding a fourth option for emergency services to our app interface, we'll provide data-driven momentum towards building more relevant emergency services nationwide. We strive to provide the same type of access 
that others can assume through calling 911. No fees, no registration, while also considering their identities to get them the right kind of help. So far, we have learned many things, but uh, the pieces of information I'll share with you today uh, that can divert calls from 911 to local crisis centers instead. Whether it is a violent situation or not, the mental and physical health status and history of the person to be treated, and whether any substances are involved. Communities that are marginalized are understandably often more likely to experience mental health emergencies, which is why our app tells those who respond to emergencies about important identity factors like autism, like mental health needs, so responders don't further perpetuate systemic issues. Communities that experience mental health emergencies often don't know about the services that are available to them. We can streamline the process, minimizing the need for them to already know who to contact. We are also learning what different words for the fourth option will include, might look like to different people, like social services versus crisis intervention versus mental health. But even though we can make communication more accessible, we're just the messengers. Crisis situations happen all the time. In fact, they happen more often during non-business hours. So having mobile crisis response teams for limited hours isn't enough. Access SOS provides communication by converting a message, kind of like a Google form, into a voice message that plays on repeat for a 911 dispatcher. Currently, we are learning how to translate information in a way that helps humanize the person in need for the 911 dispatcher. So what can you do? Tell people who we are. Our cause can be difficult to wrap your head around, especially if you've never heard of these issues. And awareness is the first step towards meaningful change. We look forward to answering any questions you have during the Q&A. I'm V, a UC Berkeley graduate student and head of product at Access SOS. And I'm Gabriella, the founder of C and CEO of Access SOS. And we believe accessibility is a human right. Thank you for your time.